Hello YouTubers and welcome to my channel. I am Negopander and if you've watched my streams then uh, good for you. Thanks for uh, subscribing. This is my first video actually that's not a live stream. Just a recorded live stream where I'm talking. So this is the first time I've done commentary. So I hope you guys like it. Uh, I wanted to focus on a couple of the bots that I play. Uh, here you can see I'm in my mid-range golem and I'm going to do a series of videos on it because I just kind of love it. Uh, for this reason right here, you can see me kind of hunting down this Geppard. And I should have led him a little bit more. That's one of the tricks you've got to learn with, uh, with the mid-range and the rockets is you've got to lead them. But um, I think everybody knows what a, uh, what a Geppard can do, especially if you get a clan of Geppards. And I'm having I'm having really good success with the uh, with the mid range golem, and dealing with uh, with some of these beacon cappers. Um, you're still not gonna deal with a, a whole clan of geppards. Uh, you know if they've got two, three, four of uh, coordinated geppards, I think those matches are pretty much unwinnable for everybody, unless you're another clan of geppards. But um, you know he's playing it cautious here. He's trying to peek around the corners and uh, and see what he can do. But he knows he's surrounded. Uh, He's also not like a, a clan Geppard or anything. He's not brilliant, but uh, yeah, you can just kind of sit back there out of range, and um, and that's the way I like to play it. I like to play my mid range first, and I like to bring them out. And when you recognize that there are beacon runners, you just uh, you just poke some missiles at them right there. I killed another guy because you can kind of survey the battlefield. It's kind of a I wish that there was a better communication system. I'm not online or uh, Discord or anything, but if there were, I can imagine that uh, being in this kind of position, you could direct the battlefield very well because you're just picking out targets and you're helping out your teammates. See, I've killed three right there. Not that kills matter that much, but you know, those are guys that could have maybe done a little bit more damage and, and kept your teammates from advancing. So. Usually, uh, everybody knows which way the Geppards come. They usually don't come right up the middle, although in Springfield, sometimes they have to. But um, you can kind of gauge where they are, and you can stave them off a little bit. If you can just, if you can just hold them back just a little bit, then you've got a chance. Uh, let your teammates catch up, and a Geppard can't really deal with two or three bots at once. And when you can stay out of the range, and that's the tricky part right here, when you get in a lot of buildings, it's hard to keep your range going. But um, I managed. Most of my kills are with the trident. So I'm able to, uh, my strategy usually is as soon as they hit you know, 601, I'm uh, letting the tridents go. And I can put a, a couple of decent rounds on them and uh, and knock a little bit of their health down then when they get a little bit closer in I'm gonna let the other ones uh, fly and yeah, this guy's sneaking up here I'm trying to I'm trying to hold them off to keep them come from advancing on this beacon but then I got kind of I got kind of spread too thin I maybe should have been out a little bit further there instead of being right there but also there was a sniper up on that ridge So I've got my eye on this Geppard right here to see if he's actually going to be a clubber, but he looks like he's not. Looks like he's fine. So he's going to advance down that way. If you're farming for gold, which I usually am, that's one reason why I hang around Silver Tier. Uh, all my weapons are level nine, and pretty much all my medium bots are level four. That so I'm pretty maxed out for the tier. Uh, if I if I raise anything, I'm going to start getting quite a bit more significant significant competition. I'm not going to win quite as, quite as much gold. But um, the level 9 weapons work pretty well. I'm just kind of advancing around here, seeing which way the guys are going. Nobody's really advancing too hard. I've got this one griffin that just popped over right here, and he's just going to be in my range. I've got a couple of bots over to the left that are, uh, that are supporting me, so we're going to wear him down pretty quickly. You don't want to be out there all by yourself. In Silver Tier, sometimes you can pull it off a little bit more. I know I do sometimes, but um, you're going to get surrounded. Uh, three on one's never a good idea. You might take down one bot, maybe two, but he was just, he was in no man's land. 
And I understand what he was trying to do. He was trying to get over to that beacon because they don't have a whole lot of choice but to get beacons. But he just didn't have any backup. His whole team went down towards the uh, the left beacon. And then you've got that one guy down there who's just basically useless artillery. So I managed to cap one beacon here, which I, I can normally get one, maybe two, when I start out with my golem, uh, with my mid-range. But sometimes I won't get any. Uh, sometimes I'm able to stay in the, the match the whole game. If my team's advancing, then you can just support your team the whole time and still get top damage. It's a, it's definitely a, a damage dealer. I, I would almost say it's the fury of this tier, the, the trident. Fury is uh, pretty much damage king in gold tier, is my understanding. I don't play up there, at least not yet. But uh, if you think about it, the golem's got he's got a heavy, he's got a mid, and he's got a light hard point. So he's got so much versatility. You can put anything on him, but he's a he's a quite fragile bot. So you really need to keep your range, and that's really the key here: is keeping your range, taking out targets strategically. And supporting right here I'm in the danger zone because I'm so close but I've been in the spot for so long that I kind of just don't care I kind of just want to get whatever damage that I can and swap out to another bot where I can actually get in and do some damage because I'm just not uh, I'm not racking up much of a score here because I've only had two targets so far this team was not very aggressive and uh, I kind of made this video this video a little bit boring at least as this battle was but uh, I think after this I'd jump into my aphid patent and try to do a little bit of cleanup so yeah I mean if you hit them with all three of those you're gonna do some damage the uh, the mixed reloads on it I, I like that I like being able to have that just massive volley on the first one that salvo of the uh, the Tolumus and the Trident and the Pin. That's that's almost as much firepower as a Griffin. I, I did the math on it, and it's it's right there with it. It's almost as much firepower as a Griffin, and people don't really uh, give it credit for that. Of course, if you're advan advancing tiers, then Griffin's a better choice because it's got better mobility and uh, and more health but I like the golem a lot I don't like spawning at this point in Springfield because you're in a tricky spot because you gotta check and see which way your teammates are going and if everybody's going the same way and especially it's especially bad if you're on the opposite side and you've got to go back across to cap the beacons because if you just go after yours and you don't pay attention to what they're doing then you'll end up with just one beacon and you'll You'll be in a just a shit ton of trouble when the other team starts capping center. They get theirs, then they get center, and you've just got one beacon, and that blue bar goes down awfully fast. Once you get there, though, this is one of my favorite spots on the map for a mid range because unless there's a bunch of snipers up there, you're kind of in the catbird seat. You can survey the battlefield and just pick your shots. This guy, I've got a couple of knifers. Well, one of them went down pretty quickly, but uh, they're drawing the fire, so I can just sit back here, wait for my missiles to reload, and I can just lay into this guy. The pins might seem a little bit insignificant, but they're not. They they do some damage. Just the one by itself. I've used sometimes just to finish off bots if there's just a little bit left. Say there's a stalker or a geppard peeking around the corner. I just use that splash damage to take them down. There's a lot of splash damage in this setup. Man, I just wasted every bit of my ammo on that one. Because I wasn't paying attention to, uh, to my ranges and I let the auto target actually pick a target for me. So that was stupid. Looks like I could possibly take this guy out right here. 
if they get around a corner. I didn't get the final shot, but I definitely brought him down some. And then the trebuchet hits you in the face. And this time I spawned in exactly the same spot, and then I've got these arty Natashas. A couple of griffins. Is that a griffin and a leo? I think. I guess I could rewind the video and see. I'm always, uh... <laughs> It, when you're an artillery Natasha, I'm always surprised when they when they actually start trying to advance on beacons. I mean, like, good for them, good for doing that, because you know at least it shows that they know that beacons are important. But yeah, they don't really get it, do they? Why am I dying all the time? I have so many zeniths. I'm too close right here. I'm definitely too close. I need to get a little more range. Took down a lot of his health, but um, this is the part of the map that I did not really want to be in. But it's a Gifford, so if he'd had mags, he would have taken me down a lot further than that. And uh, he was not a, uh, a particularly sprightly Gifford. Most Gepherds are uh, kind of hard to hit. Maybe not with the Tridents because you got so much splash, but uh, yeah. So now I'm just going to go back out, which is where I try to be. Like somewhere close to some cover, but where I can uh, get out in open space and uh, take care of anybody that's trying to make an advance. You got to lead them a little bit better than that, though. And that I did not do. He is just a little Cossack, so he's down there. I'm not too worried about him. He's not going to be doing too much damage. I don't think he's going to take the beacon. But I can help this guy out, maybe, but I don't have any shots. So that guy's going to die. And I probably used way too much ordnance on him, but I think I just was thinking I need to make sure he dies. I'm trying to make up my mind on which way I want to go because we've got three beacons we're in pretty good shape everybody's advancing onto the right but I've got two guys on the left <laughs> so I just go right up the middle because I've got two teammates on the right hand side of me that are gonna take out at least knock these knife fighters back a little bit so I wasted all my short range, not my short range, but my Tolumbus and my pins on that one. Get them fire those things separately. Sometimes I'll forget. I'll get it like just within 600 and then I'll think, oh yeah, I can just let them all go. And I'm like, oh no, I can't. So here you can see if somebody else is distracting the other team, you can do so much damage. Um, I've got, I'm doing more videos, uh, Shenzhen's a big one for that. If you can get in a good spot on Shenzhen and just like unload on some beacon runners, you're gonna really rack up some damage. One little Tulumbus can really do a lot of damage. I was so close to taking that little pat now. This is maybe my favorite place to spawn. Looks like a Destrier and a Gepard are over there, so we've got some beacon runners, and I uh, feel pretty good about this team. This was actually a, a quite good team. It looks like I got bumped up a little bit for this battle, because as you can see, like, I had a Stalker and a Carnage in there, so it's a couple of WSP bots that I don't usually run into. Sometimes I will, or maybe they got bumped down, I don't know. So I usually, it just depends, I usually do try to come up this way because I've got a little bit of cover there and uh, if there are any snipers try to take up uh, on the dam, then I can put a little bit of uh, pressure on them, make them high a little bit. And uh, there's always going to be a guy that's running up for this beacon or center beacon. 
I almost missed everything with that. I was just shooting straight into the air. And at this point, I decided to back up because I don't want to get too close. I'll let them take the beacon and then I can shoot them from safety. Plus, I've got this little boa over here. He's going to distract them. I notice as I'm doing these just how much hate I put on the Geppards. Because anytime I see something running quickly like that, I automatically assume it's a Geppard and I just want to kill it. I mean, with good reason. I want to kill it as fast as possible. Because I'm assuming if I see one Geppard early on in the game, there's going to be four more right behind that one. And the quicker you can mech those guys out the better your chances of winning the game are. My teammates actually took care of him. I believe that was that carnage over there that got him. And I'm able to just kind of back up and just unleash the whirlwind. So, as you can see on those last couple of bots, I put in the major damage and then the guy's able to finish him up with the thunders. I mean, that's, that's nice. Um, if you can get a teammate to run with you when you're running mid-range and he goes a couple of hundred meters in front of you so say that you just you're backing him up and he's uh he's putting the damage on him he's tanking and you come in behind him and just back him up and that's uh that's a pretty brutal combo that's a pretty brutal combo I'm a little worried about my health here because if I got too much closer then they're really going to start wearing me out. The bullets hurt after a little while. You can you can stand them for a minute but then you got to start looking for cover. I really liked pairing up with that uh, with that little boa right there. That's another one of my favorite bots. Especially the bow with the Terran. I've been playing with a bow with the Orkin, and um, I'm getting better with it. But I like the uh, I like the range a little bit better with the Terran. It's more accurate, much more accurate. But the pair of us were just able to finish that guy off quickly. And you can see we've got this game under control. Pretty much me and that guy we're able to handle just about anything that comes this way. That was one little salvo there of mine and I took that guy down to half health. You can see the splash damage is just ridiculous. I've killed so many bots just with splash. I mean, Vitez, I mean, they've got a little bit of health. They're nothing to, nothing to sneeze at. They've got more health than a Golem anyways. It depends on what level it is, of course. Now, I've just got to remember to keep my range, because sometimes I forget, especially when you get in here and you start going all things out. And you get inside of uh, behind some cover. This team was, uh, they started off pretty strongly. The Reds did. They were, uh, they were fairly aggressive in the beginning, but then it all just fell apart. And uh, I think I just had a really good team on this one as well. Like, uh, when you've got a good team, you can cover each other and, uh, and help each other out. So, yeah, that's the last one for now. Thanks for staying tuned for my uh, my mid-range golem show. Uh, that was a mid-range golem in Springfield. So hopefully I'll be making some more pretty soon. You can see there. See, I uh, top damage, zero beacons, only one kill. But uh, that's just how much damage I was able to do. So thanks a lot for dropping by and watching my video. If you got anything out of it whatsoever, just go ahead and hit the like button. And feel free to subscribe and see you later.